Welcome back everybody. Derek Sue, your 2022 Oakland mayoral candidate. Well, uh, we're in the final testing right here of our solar system. You see uh, one of the banks, the power solar unit, and then the one right behind it. We have four more of these panels uh, coming uh, once we get them in place. Right now with just two panels, we have 200 watts of energy, uh, which is being absorbed by the battery system here and also being used uh, by different things uh, that I have hooked into uh, uh, either in the uh, inverter or through the uh, power controller. And so I have a 12 volt system, which is DC electric. And then I also with the inverter have 120 volt AC uh, for household cars, for things like microwave ovens, uh, heaters, uh, coffee pot, uh, you can do TVs and a lot of other things. So there's, there's two different systems going on here uh, and we're operating, uh, can't quite see the refrigerator, but the community refrigerator operates off of that. Uh, we also have a backup uh, generator uh, for the days that get cloudy right now so that we can maintain a high charge on the batteries at all times. And so one of the things that I also wanted to stress is how things uh, uh, are different when you're uh, living off-grid with a solar system. So I'll be right back and we'll be talking about that when we come back. Okay folks, we're back inside. We're at the charge controller. And so right now what you see is on the left there, you see a little screen looking thing with arrow pointing towards the battery. That's a solar panel putting charge into the battery. Right now we have 200 watts going into the battery. And then the little lines that you see going out towards the light bulb, that's the usage uh, of uh, what's going out through the uh, charge controller, not what's going on with the inverter. The inverter itself takes a, can use up to 220 amps of 12 volt DC power. And so this battery, as you see, we have all sorts of char additional charging units attached to this to temporarily until we get uh, <clears throat> the rest of the panels in and connect it. But anyway, that battery provides, uh, in the normal sense, uh, 440 amp hours of reserve capacity at 25 amps of 12 volt DC draw. And so we don't want to exceed that, that number, number one, because it starts overheating the cells and then that causes uh, a shorter life on the battery. So we don't want to exceed the use of 25 amps an hour. And so <clears throat> by adding three more batteries, making it four, yeah, we equal 100 uh, amp draw. That is possible for a sustained period. And then with eight batteries, we uh, are right at the criteria of what the power inverter needs for uh, sustained um, use near 4,000 watts or at 4,000 watts. Uh, we don't want to exceed, actually, uh, we don't want to go push the 4,000 watts. We want to stay at least 10% below and actually 20% is a safer uh, cushion. And so at, uh, we recommend or what's recommended is not to exceed 3,700 watts of power. So that gives us a 300 watt uh, cushion uh, in the event of we add, somebody adds something uh, uh, into the system. And so there's also a whole different mindset and I'm gonna get back into that in just a moment. Okay, now that we're back, I wanna talk about how solar living is different than solar living in a home where you're connected to the grid. Off-grid living, you are completely tied by the amount of sunlight that's that's uh, supplied, and then also the uh, ability to charge and hold uh, electricity in a in a battery system for later use, especially that uh, when you uh, 
things uh, like the sun goes down, the evening time hits. And so it's a whole different lifestyle and a way of a whole different way of looking at things because one of the things when you live off grid with uh, solar electricity, you're going to get good at, at your math because uh, what you're constantly uh, doing is adding and subtracting usage. Uh, and uh, the system, we're, we're just going to use a very simple uh, uh, metaphor here. <clears throat> the batteries are the bank. Your charging panels, your solar panels, is your investments. And so your investments are constantly paying the bank to the bank. And then from the bank, you're using uh, the value to uh, generate the service that you need. The service in this case being electrical power. And so uh, very simple adding and subtracting. Uh, you're, you're putting in 200 watts uh, every hour with the uh, charge system, the solar system right now into the battery bank, your bank. And so we're adding 200 watts every hour. But then we also have to think about what we're using and subtract that. And so I have a charger which charges everybody's phones and iPads and uh, five volt uh, circuits. Um, that draws 65 watts by itself. And so now we start finding out the importance of watts. And because the watts are the fine tuned numbers that actually get us uh, either in a good place or in trouble. And so uh, it's important that uh, a watt meter be used. And so I have one on order through Amazon. Uh, and so we're going to be going through adding up and adding, subtracting the wattage as we go along uh, with this project and, and determine usage. But right now uh, we seem to be holding really good at about 3,000 watt hours and so uh, three kilowatt hours and, and that seems to be fine for most uses here it operates a refrigerator operates our microwave our coffee maker all of our uh, electronics for our ipad our phones lighting uh, and and a lot of other things and so uh, we have four more so we're going to be adding 400 more watts to the system we're going to be adding more banks uh, a total of uh, seven more uh, batteries we're going to be adding to the system for a total of eight and then that brings us with the eight uh, eight d size batteries brings us to uh, our required uh, minimum which is 200 uh, amps an hour or at least 220 amps an hour uh, as a maximum we don't ever plan on running uh, the maximum <laughs> is that uh, you're running the risk of actually damaging the power inverter, blowing fuses, and uh, having to replace uh, parts. So you, you never really want to push things to the limit. Uh, there are ways where we can actually increase uh, wattage throughout the home uh, through a different system. We can actually uh, provide up to 12 kilowatts an hour. Uh, on not only a single phase but on a split phase system which is uh, your uh, three phase 208 systems like in a home 220 volt systems AC and so we have that ability with solar but it just requires having and adding in enough uh, solar panels to create enough wattage to cover the wattage usage and uh, the demand and then we have to calculate that and then uh, multiply that by a certain factor to build in a reserve. So a lot of these things are, are calculations that are, like I said, going to make you really good at math uh, when you start uh, doing the numbers. And, and it's very simple. And, and it's uh, once everything is installed in a basic system with uh, uh, the parameters built in are fully operational, which we will have shortly, uh, we'll be able to uh, do the final numbers so that we can know what to expect out of every system that we put into the Conestoga huts, that uh, the tiny homes that we're um, uh, working on throughout Oakland here. We have three different projects going right now, so just to let you know, this is a very important project. And uh, once we get everything in place, 
now we have to start teaching people how to learn how to learn to live with off-grid uh, solar electricity because it's it really uh, one of the things about uh, off-grid uh, solar system it really teaches you how wasteful that you can be with electricity and through simple things and things that we really don't even think about but they all add up and so uh, that's the importance of when you go to an off-grid solar system you have to really uh, think about whether you want to uh, withdraw those bank watts or not or keep them in in the battery bank itself and hold them for another time then uh, we want to have uh, enough reserves so that on uh, cloudy days we can get by you know possibly reducing and cutting back some of the usage on things but uh, we we still have enough electrical supply to keep our refrigerators going heaters going uh, uh, air conditioning possibly in the future uh, with enough additional solar panels because the system that we're going to be competing here is going to be 600 watts of input uh, that's uh, 600 watts going into a battery bank every hour so uh, <clears throat> right now we're getting about nine hours if you figure 600 that's 5400 watts going into a battery bank and so that's the kind of wattage that we have available uh, for use once the sun goes down by storing them in in the battery bank at that end uh, the larger the battery bank that you have, the better. But then there's also different types of batteries. There's limitations on batteries. What we're doing right now, we're using the lowest cost batteries possible, which is the flooded cells. Uh, and these are, aren't the standard ones that you get in a car or, or anything. These are uh, industrial duty, so they're real uh, constructed really heavy. Uh, they put out a tremendous amount of uh, amperage uh, for a sustained time. Uh, reserve capacity on each of these batteries is 440 minutes at 25 amp draw. And so supposedly going from 100% all the way down to a dead battery is 440 minutes but for uh, sustained life like in a solar system we don't want to run it below 51 percent ever and even at 50 percent we're doing damage to the batteries itself so we don't uh, want to draw on them too too uh, deeply <clears throat> so rather than 440 reserve capacity minutes we actually end up with about 200 uh, amp hours of uh, capacity uh, for a 25 amp uh, maximum draw uh, of the cell and so uh, and the thing about going to a more expensive battery system like the lithium ion uh, uh, phosphate that these batteries, while they, they have more capacity, uh, they're not uh, that much lighter. They are lighter, but they're not that much lighter. Uh, the big advantage about them is that uh, there's a battery management system in uh, built into each one of them, a BMS, and then that allows those batteries to be drawn down uh, to uh, 80%. And with only a 20% uh, reserve capacity left without uh, damaging the batteries. Also, uh, these batteries can be charged uh, for a much uh, greater amount of times. 3,000 uh, recharge lives is pretty typical and pretty much uh, uh, up to a maximum life of 5,000 recharges without significant uh, uh, degradation of uh, the, re the holding and uh, charge capacity. So these are, well, the, <laughs> those batteries are terribly expensive, but uh, to get a, a 200 amp hour battery, which now is we're comparing apples to apples or trying to as closely as possible. We're looking at a 200 amp hour uh, lithium uh, I ion phos phosphate uh, battery costing eight to nine hundred dollars a unit and then we need eight at the very minimum so you can see how uh, expensive it can get very quickly <coughs> so these are things that that uh, we have to look at 
the flooded cell type batteries. Uh, we also know that there's going to be some basic maintenance. The basic maintenance is going to be uh, filling uh, water into the cells from time to time, making sure that they're topped off. Uh, whereas on an AGM uh, absorbed glass mat, uh, you don't have that. Uh, gel cell batteries, you don't have that, but they're both very, very expensive. <clears throat> and they don't last that much longer than a standard flooded cell. But as far as uh, comparing it to uh, the, the lithium ion uh, phosphate uh, cells, they're terribly expensive uh, when you compare them uh, over the long haul over the same basic time period. Uh, that the AGMs are terribly, terribly expensive and, and just the storage cost is, uh, if I remember right, nearly $2.